Hey, hey, all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Nearman Condition. And today, join me as I go over my list of the top 10, no, wait, let's do top 11, because I'm weird, most read books out of my library. And no, Watchmen is not one of them. So stay tuned. Now, before I get the list officially started, thank you so much to Anne Mai for even suggesting this. And also the live chat on Saturday, you all were asking me these questions and it put a lot of thoughts in my head as to what my most read books are. So, yes, of course I'm kicking it off with Uncanny X-Men by Chris Claremont. This is Omnibus Volume 1. I think I have probably read this 12 times in the amount of time that I've had it because I like doing rereads of my X-Men. Uh, and this is my very first omnibus. It's the one that I said, okay, I guess I'm collecting this format now. Still have my single issues, but this is the way that I prefer to read it. Uh, so you'll see omnibus on this list. You'll see um, trade paperbacks, absolute editions, a manga. It doesn't matter because these books are meant to be read. So to me, owning them, you know, in the best format, of course, I want to read them that way. But just because I have, uh, they don't have an omnibus, I'm not going to not read a trade paperback. But yes, of course, Uncanny X-Men. Even though the pages are getting a little bit yellow now, you know. Uh, and, and I've also let... I forgot about this. I've, I let my wife borrow this to uh, let some of her students read it. That was years ago. But they took care of it. I think I made them sign some kind of contract in blood. Um, but now, now that I'm looking at it, maybe it's time to upgrade. You know, it was my very first omnibus. Not saying that I'll ever get rid of it, but I just petted it like a kid or a pet. All right, let's move on. Next up is Animal Man by Grant Morrison. And what you'll see on this list is sometimes books that are out of print. And you're like, what the hell is wrong with you, dude? Why would you read that so often? Well, because books are supposed to be read. And I know it's weird because I'm also a collector. I love having these things on the shelf. But damn it, you know, they're meant to be cracked open. They're meant to be enjoyed. They're meant to be read. I don't want to own a damn book and then get the digital file to start reading it on Comixology. I want to read the book and feel it in my hands and get that smell of a new... Well, this definitely doesn't have a new book smell, that's for sure. But, yeah, so you're see, you're going to see some books here that you're going to be like, why would you even read that? Transformers Phase 2, Volume 1. I've read this so many times now and more than I have any of Phase 1, especially this volume right here because this volume just speaks numbers to me and... I have let my daughter read them, uh, and we both just sit here and bond over these wonderful moments that started in Phase 2, Volume 1, without giving spoilers away. I know I'm showing artwork as I talk about these books, otherwise you're just going to be seeing my mug talking about these books. But that's mainly why I have read this. I don't know, probably seven, eight times, and if you're keeping count, Graham Morrison's Omnibus, since it's only had one printing, like probably about four times. Now here's a book that I absolutely adore and I don't think I've ever had a chance to actually talk about it much and that is David Peterson's Mouse Guard. I've always said that I'm a big fan of Redwall and fantasy novels like that so this spoke to me when I saw Little Mice with Swords. Of course I was going to pick this up and of course I'm going to introduce my kids to it and that's probably part of the reason why we probably read this about eight or nine times just because when they were younger I would read it to them. Now that they're a little bit older you know they're choosing their own books, but uh, this one, yeah, this one got read a lot. Now, come on, Peterson, we need more. Nightwing. So you're going to see trade paperbacks, you're going to see hardcovers, omnis, manga on this list, and because I like to read, and I like to read in all formats, and unfortunately, this is the only format that this is available in. And there is no omnibus of Nightwing yet, but there's just something fun about this story. There's something unique about it that I really enjoy. And yeah, it's, it's definitely borrowing heavily from Batman where, he, you know, Dick Grayson is now his own man and he's sitting in the city of Bloodhaven, which is worse than Gotham. And he's having to do things on his own. And maybe it's because I read it as a, you know, a teenager going into college that I was like, oh, I'm totally my own man, just like Dick Grayson. But... That's why I think uh, this is the newest printing, but it's already been read like three times. No, four times because I did a Nightwing uh, reading order and I try to go through my books, at least reading the first volume when I start those lists. I told you, you collectors would not be happy with me, but this is the only way that I own this. Yes, I could have bought this trade paperback edition of this comic, but no, I, I have the book. I might as well crack it open and 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 read it. I, of course, at the time when I read it the first time, I had no idea how much it was going to be valued at. 
but I must have read this book probably three times now. And like I said, I know I know the value of it. Obviously not anymore. But to me, you know, like I mentioned earlier, books are supposed to be read. And this is Stan Sakai's Usagi Ojimbo Saga. I've read this more than I have the Fanagraphics, uh, the first seven volumes. Even though most people will tell you to start there. I think this is a pretty good jumping on point too. I mean, it kicks off with the Ninja Turtles crossover. So, yes, that's why this one gets a lot of love. At this moment, I just want to remind you to please hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. If you're enjoying these type of videos and have not subscribed, maybe you should subscribe. Just saying. This list was pretty interesting to make because these are not my favorite stories. This is not my favorite Batman story, but it's the one I probably read the most in this format. And that's due to Jim Lee's phenomenal artwork. This is Jeff Loeb's Hush, but... To me, the selling point was always Jim Lee, and to have it in this oversized format, you damn right, I I think I've read this probably seven times, eight times of going into old reader, new reader, but I, I don't know. It, it's a, it, just, it was an interesting list to make because it's not like I mentioned these are not my favorite stories. I don't have just 10 or 11 X-Men Omnis here, which probably that's what you were expecting, but no, these are the books that I've cracked open the most and have read the most. So why Invincible? Why not Watchmen, right? Because Watchmen sometimes, as much as I love it, is a chore to read. Whereas Invincible, I can just jump in and read it over and over. And it's just a fun book. If I forget what superhero comics are really supposed to be about or what the best representation of them as far as just being a fun comic and just having heart in there too, th this is definitely the, ma the personification of that. And that's Robert Kirkman's Invincible. If if you haven't read it i suggest reading the first volume it's a lot of fun i don't you know i've heard people say that it's dated but to me it really doesn't feel like it's dated i like the material in here and from beginning to end i may do an overview of it this weekend too because i know some of y'all have been wanting to see that chore to read i don't care i think i've read this damn book about eight times this is starman omnibus well this is the omnibus but keep in mind this is the standard edition hopefully dc will one day resolicit and reprint this in an actual omnibus format. This is James Robinson's masterpiece. I've gone on 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 and on about this book, but I love the forwards and also the ending notes that he writes on there. I think I have probably read those more than I've actually read the story uh, in this format, just because it's um, amazing to see where he was at what point in his life when he was writing these stories and what these stories mean to him now that he can reflect back on them so uh yeah of course you you probably saw this coming you probably saw a lot of these coming how many times i've read them if you've been a fan of the channel for a while the life and times of scrooge mcduck of course i have this on the list so you're probably asking why don't you have the fan of graphics one well because i'm being fair I've read this one a shit ton more than I have the Fanagraphics version. This is the Boom version, even though I know how Don Rosa feels about it, but it's just the one that I read the most. It has all the notes in between the stories that I think help add to the story, and I know it's not in oversized format like the Fanagraphics versions, but this is the one, to be fair, that I have read the most. And you all know how much these stories here mean to me. So, yeah, of course, this is number 10. So we got one more. Did you really think I was going to make a video about my most read books and not talk about this masterpiece that is Berserk Volume 1? This is the Tankaban, of course. Um, I have the Deluxe Edition, but I've only read the Deluxe Edition just one time. This damn thing, this is my very first printing that Dark Horse sent me to review. So it means a lot to me. Um, that was back in 2003. So I... 15 times maybe the, yeah i know it's crazy because it's not even the best volume right to me berserk doesn't really get started until the next saga which is probably about volume three of these uh smaller versions but yeah but i have to start i'm a completist so i have to start at the beginning i have to start where the story uh starts off even though i can't stand puck um and even though the art's a little rough but still brilliant but yeah, of course Berserk is on this list. It's wonderful, and if you've never read it, do yourself a favor, get those deluxe editions. Now, you can get most of these books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com. 
your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my list. I'd love to know what your top 11, top 5, top 10, top 20, whatever you want to do, most read books out of your library are. Whatever they are, which ones get the most love? Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe, don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. We can be found on Redbubble and Patreon. Those are phenomenal ways to support the channel if you can do so. All of that information is in the description down below and thank you to our existing patrons. And please, more importantly, don't forget that everyone please stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love to you all.